Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Victory Assured broadcast. We're so grateful unto the Lord for you and your presence here today. We know that you could have taken this time to do anything else, but we thank you for watching us. Share us with your family members and friends and let them know that the gospel is being preached and taught. Today, we're going to be looking at the heart of David. We're in a two-part series on the heart. So we're going to be looking at the heart of David today. We're going to be going to 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter, then Acts, the 13th chapter, to look at the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. We'll go right into the word of the Lord for today. Amen. Father, we thank you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all of your blessings flow. Now, Father, as we go into your word, we pray you open up our understanding and enlighten us and help us to know and to understand and to receive your word. Father, as always, without your presence, without your anointing, we can do absolutely nothing. So, Father, see your anointing that makes teaching more profitable to both the giver and the recipient. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And again, we're going to be talking about the heart of David. So let us begin our reading in 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter. Then we'll go quickly over to the book of Acts. And it says in 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter, verses 14 through uh, 15. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. This is God talking to Saul. So we're to pick it up in the middle of a thought process. And the latter part of that, it says, The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord have commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord have commanded thee. And Samuel rose and got him up from Gilgad unto Gibeah, Gibeah of Benjamin, and saw number the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. Amen. And then we're going over to Acts, the uh, thirteen chapter as well. Of Acts the thirteen chapter, we're going to be looking at verses twenty-two to twenty-three. And when he had removed him, he raised up to them David to be their kin, kin, king. To whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. And of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Amen. So when we look at Saul and we look at David, mainly the heart of David, we all know that the Israelites asked God for a king. They requested for a king. But Samuel, he was upset, thinking that the people were rejecting him. But God let Samuel know, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. I'm going to give them a king. And I'm going to let them know what a king shall do for them. And I'm also going to let them know that a king has flaws. And a king really it's not what they really need. Remember, they existed under a theocracy, not a monarchy or a democratic society or a dictatorship. They existed under a theocracy. And a theocracy means God rules supreme. God was their king. They could not see God, but they knew God. And they knew God was their king. But whenever we seek to be like others that are around us, surrounding nations, surrounding countries, so surrounding municipalities, things of that nature, then we walk in the spirit of compromise. And when we walk in the spirit of compromise, we also open up ourselves to some of the characteristics and attributes and some of the same things that other people have suffered under a monarchy under a democratic society or dictatorship. God is not a dictator. He's not a democratic society where we can vote him in out. He's not a monarchy where he only allows certain things and looks out for his people. But he is a theocracy, meaning that God looks out for every single mankind, for every person, the same way. He doesn't show favoritism. He judges righteously. Because he looks at the heart of a man to know what his judgments will be. Unlike 
in our societies where democracy is up to the choice and the will of the people who elect a candidate or representatives and they could be diverse, they could be divisive, they may not even see on the same sheet of music and they may not understand what is in your heart. A, even a dictatorship is only looking to do what is right in their own eyesight and only for their best interests and the interests of others that support their beliefs and their understanding. But God, although he exists in and of himself, he has created all things and all things by his good pleasure for him. So therefore, he understands and comprehends things that we don't even understand. He comprehends things about us that we don't even know about our own selves. And he understands what we need and what we need that is best for us. So as a theocracy, God understood that the people did not need that, but yet he is willing to accommodate them. And listen, we can ask for things so much and for so long and be persistent, although he has already given us the answer and caused us to know we can ask for something for so much and for so long that he will accommodate us with it. And at the end of the day, we will find out that that really wasn't what we needed in the first place. Too many Christians, too many believers have prayed and asked God for things, for people, a husband, a wife, a home, a child, a position, a prestige and power for money and various other things. And some of those things have caused us heartache. They have caused us agony. They have caused us pain, disappointment, and causing us to be disgruntled. It is good to wait upon the seasons of the Lord. Let me say that again. It is good for us to wait on the seasons that the Lord himself chooses to bless us and honor us. Because when he blesses us, and when he honors us, it is so thorough, it is so complete, and it brings joy, it brings satisfaction, and we never have to deal with the downside of it. And if we do, God is with us through it all. He's with us through it all. So when we look at David, a man after God's own heart, after God had rejected Saul, he tells Samuel, gives Samuel a certain set of instructions to go to anoint David or go to anoint the next king. So he arrives at the house of Jesse. We all know the story. And we see that Jesse has sons that are presented before Saul, Samuel. And Samuel believes that he sees the first son as being the anointed of God because of his stature, because of his looks. He was a handsome man. But yet the Bible lets us know that that wasn't God's choice. God's choice never looks like what we think it should look like. There are some folk that we are rejecting, that we have cast to the side, that we have ostracized, and that we have dismissed because they did, did not look like what we thought a vessel chosen by God should look like. They didn't have the mannerisms. They didn't have the style. They didn't have the finesse. They didn't have the charisma. They didn't have the vocabulary. They didn't have the connectivity. They didn't have a social path to greatness. They couldn't even articulate or express themselves well. They couldn't even dress well. There was no beauty or no form in them, just like Jesus, that we would be attracted unto him or them. But yet God looks deeper than what any of us will ever look. And when God saw 
when Samuel saw David, God immediately communicated to him to anoint him with oil that he was the one that he had selected to be captain over his people. Listen, when are we going to regain our sensitivity in the Lord to know what God's choices are? Let me state that again. When are we going to get to the place that we become extremely sensitive, not based upon ritualism, not based upon our current social connections in ministry, as well as professionally and personally. When are we going to get to the point in our lives that our selections become the selections of God? When are we going to look at things and say, nope, 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 God ain't in that one. Nope, 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 God has not selected that one. Nope, 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 God ain't in this program. No, God is not in that. When are we going to get back to the point that we select the things that God says, I've appointed, I've selected. These are the things that honor me the most. When we look at God's heart, the way he looks at his own heart, and when we look at his selections, the way that he looks at his selections, we will find, I guarantee it, that we will make different choices of who we listen to, who we follow, and what we obey. I think I want to say that again. We will make better choices as to who we follow, what we say, and who we obey, and the voices that are out there. The spirit of holiness is demanding so much more from the people of God. The spirit of holiness is demanding that we be led by the Spirit of God. It's Romans day. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Many of us are missing out on our sonship because we're not being led by the Spirit of God. When we are led by the Spirit of God, our hearts makes better choices. Our choices define our character our personality, who we are as a person or an individual or even as a servant of the Lord. Our choices are either met with success, mediocrity, or with failure. But when we follow the choices of God, he establishes us. As he establishes David, as is stated in Acts the 13th chapter, that he would never fail to have a man to sit on his throne. That through him came our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we make that type of investment in our choices and decisions to follow God, our future our posterity is perpetuated. It lasts forever. Whenever we are obedient to the spirit of the living God, to obey his voice, to do what he says, regardless of how long it takes to get to the objective, but during the journey and the process, listen, there is a horn of oil. This message is taken on a whole different dynamic. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is a horn of oil that is being reserved for God's choices and for the ones who will carry out the will of God without compromise. 
that are yet hidden in obscurity, waiting to come out to the forefront. And there are going to be people, pastors, prophets, teachers, apostles, prophets, anointed vessels of a living God that have been overlooked for years. Hear me now, because I'm speaking about the spirit of the living God. People have been overlooked for years that, has an, that have an anointing on their lives that is needful for the climate and the day and the time that we are living in. These are God's agents of change. These are God's agents of change. These are game changers, atmosphere impactors. They have an anointing that will change the direction of the church and of the world. These are the people that Romans talks about, that the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Earnest expectation, is expectation they're crying out, waiting for these select vessels of God. who have a heart and the mind of God to come to the forefront, you need to ask yourself a question. Am I anointed for this season? Or am I anointed for the next season? Or am I anointed for the seasons? Am I anointed by God? And that horn of oil, listen, Thank you, Holy Spirit. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. This horn of oil is not a horn that will come by the hands of man. But listen, man will obey who the oil should be placed upon. But this horn of oil is in the spirit realm. And it is God himself who has blessed and anointed the oil. And when this oil flows, it will flow with such a scent of holiness that everyone around it that sees it, this anointing that happens in the spirit, but manifests itself in the natural realm, shall not be hidden. This is going to be a supernatural public announcement of who God has selected who God has anointed. Because the scriptures say that anointed David. From that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. It is just like Jesus' baptism with John, that when he came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him and lighted upon him, and the heavens opened up and declared, this is my well-beloved son. In the realm of the spirit of the living God, there will be a proclamation from the eternal God into the natural realm of earth to make the proclamation that this 
is my anointed vessel of honor. This is who, listen, when the Spirit of God came upon David as it came upon Jesus, it led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he successfully resisted the devil. These anointed vessels are called to bring order to the kingdom of God, to the church, to the world. These are game changers that are anointed by God to bring back the very presence of the living God, to bring back the spirit of worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. They're not concerned about a man's agenda. They're only concerned about the agenda of heaven. And they understand the, prerequ the prerequisites, the prerequisites of heaven. They understand that they are eternal. And they understand at the forefront that worship is a key to what they need to do. They understand that they must worship God in the spirit of truth. Because God is seeking such to worship him. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They have come out of themselves. And they have learned to tap into a power supply that exceeds them. They understand that this power supply is so full. That if it were to fill them up they would explode. But they understand the key of worship. That worship is like having additional cloud space to download onto a vessel who lacks the capacity to receive and retain. They understand that worship elevates them to a greater plane and opens them up to a greater capacity to receive, to do so much more than what they were designed physically to do. They understand the key to them functioning in the kingdom, the man's prayerfulness. These are the ones that will bring back prayer. My house is called a house of prayer. They understand until I bring the presence of the Lord back. I can pray all I want but until the presence of the living God enters where I am, my prayers are fruitless. But once I enter into the dimension where the atmosphere has been reset in the heart and in the world and in the realm, then our prayers become far more effective. These are the ones that will demand respect for God. They are the ones that will demand by the heart, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be God or will it be man? Or will it be mammon? Will it be the gods that you serve on the opposite side of the flood? Choose ye the day. Make a choice. They're going to be the ones that demand after the heart of David that this horn of oil will not be wasted. Listen, Saul was anointed by God because David used these words, I will not touch the anointed of God. He would not stretch forth his hands when opportunity presented itself that he could have slain Saul multiple times. He chose that he would not touch the Lord's anointed. Even in his rejected state, 
But David understood something about the anointing that it was deserving of the same respect that God was deserving of. And because that anointing came from God and he knew he was anointed, he was not going to disrespect the anointing of God. Here's our next point. Respectful of the anointing of the oil that God places on one's life. You may not be in agreement with what God has done or whom God has used or going to use or going to anoint, but this horn of oil demands your respect, demands that you honor God's anointing and God's selected vessel because they're connected to your life is sustainability and every single blessing that the Lord has he wants you to experience the blessings of the Lord God almighty upon your life listen these persons are humble, they are meek, they love God. Listen, they are fierce in their spirit. They are brave towards the things that go on in the realm of the spirit that others are afraid to tackle and to deal with. It takes courage. It takes boldness. It takes heavenly authority to be able to deal with some of these challenges that we see that are all around us. We could turn a blind eye to it or not, but we see the challenges that are at hand. We see that they are warriors, they are strong, they are bold, they are courageous. They walk in integrity. Listen, and they know how to align with appropriate relationships. They know how to help others to align with appropriate relationships even in their lives and in other lives these are people that demand reconciliation they don't allow junk to continue in their atmosphere they don't allow people to be upset with one another this is the place of love this is the place of respect this is the place where we're going to forgive one another. We're going to appreciate one another. We're going to walk in the integrity of God's word. And we're going to demand that integrity in the bar be risen. We want holiness and righteousness in our presence. These are the things that God is demanding. He will deal with whatever is wrong swiftly. He will be generous. He loves. He looks out for God's people. He stands for justice. He stands for loyalty. And he is devoted to God. When our hearts are like David, when we walk in the love of the Lord. Listen, we are no wise finished, but we are out of our time for the day. God bless you and have a wonderful week in the Lord.